Hi and welcome back to another video. It's been now quite some time since I uploaded my last video. I think two or three weeks and actually I had to do some work and I was busy restructuring the whole room here. Um, as you probably can see, we are now facing the other side of the room. So I changed everything around 180 degrees. The console and the racks were facing that wall beforehand. Um, I lit needed a little bit more space. As you can see, I have you know, two racks, one there and one there. Um, got a little bit more equipment, um, also acquired um, some microphones, have a new master bus processor that I'm going to show you. Um, so it's been now a little bit of a time since I did my last studio tour, which was at the end of 2016. So I said to myself, well, this is a good opportunity um, to make another video of my studio. And I would say I'm going to show you now with the camera just a little bit around. I'm going to show you how everything um, kind of works and I'm also going to show you um, a little bit of the equipment and the routing. All right, so I would say let's get started. All right, so I would say we start here in this first corner here with the first track. On top here I got a record player. Let's see what we have in here. Neil Young Harvest. I really love that record. Um, I just used it for lying on the couch and listen to some records. And then let's move on here to the first pre-amplifier, um, which is the TLA Ivory 5050. I made a video about that a review, so check that out on my channel if you are interested in that. It is a tube pre-amplifier with a built-in compressor and I mainly use that for acoustic guitar. Then below we got the Friedenstein VAS Micro Pre and is connected to a Friedenstein compressor. Um, it's a fat compressor, so kind of a little bit like K1176, very fast compressor. And I use that for recording vocals, background vocals and voiceover. But it also works great for um, percussion, for example, shaker, tambourine. So to kind of like tame the transients a little bit when recording. So it sounds really creamy and smooth. Then good old power plant for recording electric guitar. I uh, mainly use not the clean channel, but I use the overdrive channel. And this is essentially um, great for very heavy distorted guitars. Um, goes out on the back, directly below here, into the converters, and kind of emulates a Marshall stack, so very thick overdriven sound. Then here, the hi-fi components of the Grundig um, Nakamishi tape deck for listening to some tapes. I also did some recordings with that for drum loops, for example, or bass to thicken up um, the loops a little bit. Sounds actually um, great. Um, it's a little bit actually too clean. Um, the Nakamishi tape decks tend to be kind of like a little bit of his CD quality. And um, so not that good for lo-fi recordings. Um, probably use the Fostex 4-track that I have for that. Um, then radio normal um, tuner. And here is the Grundig preamplifier system with many different inputs, phono, tuner, mix. Where's my console actually? Video aux, the Mac, and also tape deck. And this is connected to the big speakers here that I really, really like. And finally, below here, the three Fire Studio projects from PreZonus. Nothing changed there. Um, and everything is connected to the console, so the 24 channels. Um, the XMAX preamps, I don't use them very much. I use my outboard preamps for that, so just the line level here. And they do a really great job. They sound very clean and have a good price um, and quality ratio. All right, then coming up here to the master bus, um, which is the first new unit. It's the Tegela Audio Manufactura Cream, and it's a stereo processor for subgroups or other stereo applications. And I use it on the main mix here on the console, so as an insert. And I found out that the, um, the master bus works really great with a little bit of a low-end boost and a high-end boost around 12,000 hertz. And very, very um, kind of like gentle compression, like on an SSL console with auto release. 30 or sometimes 10 milliseconds, depends on the um, music um, of attack. And 
ratio to the one as you can see it's just tickling the needle a little bit but what i really like about this unit is this feature here the side chain low cut where you can actually um, switch between 120 hertz and 60 hertz um, so the compressor reacts um, not to the low frequencies and so the base is fully saved here all right or you go to the full mode so the compressor is reacting to the low frequencies um, very very good sounding unit take the auto manufacturer cream all right then here the console let's move on before we go to the console to the second rack here i have here on top the um, another TLA unit in the Ebony series, the A2. Also have a review about that. Um, this was essentially my master bus processor before I received the Tegela. And it's now sitting on a um, insert on the acoustic guitars. and works also really great for that, especially with the compressor. It's not that um, a, a aggressive compressor. And I used the equalizer with a little bit of a low end boost and a high end boost. You can also take out some mid frequencies. And what I really like is the tube stage here that you can plant in. So you get a really smooth, gentle sounding acoustic guitars. All right. Then here, this bad boy that is slamming here is the drum bus parallel compressor. The Elise is 3630, very old unit, very, very affordable unit but it sounds great when you plant it in on the drum bus. Then here, a arrangement of FMR audio, two RNCs and one RNLA. I use that one for bass. The middle one, the RNC here is for the instrument bus. And this guy, which is also really slamming, is on the um, vocal parallel compression. So on the last subgroup and um, thickens really up the, the vocals. Um, the units itself, this one is a little bit more aggressive. You can hear a little bit of artifacts when compressing very hard, but it is intended to be that way. Um, and the RNC is very clean, very open sounding, and you actually, especially in the super nice mode, you can't hear any compression, even if you're compressing up to four, six, or eight dB of gain reduction. And then um, down here, we have the effects units, outboard effects. Yes, I still use them. Um, it's a good way, especially when you have multiple channels on the converters going out to the console to take a little bit um, CPU strain away. So you can save some CPU, CPU power with that. And you use multiple plugins, especially reverb plugins. Um, first one is the Alesis MidiVerb 4. Um, in the warm room setting, change that a little bit. It's a very kind of like a mellow sounding, dark sounding room. I used that to make the impression that everything was tracked in one room. Um, Lexicon MX200 is mainly for, um, or I used that mainly for the drums, snare or overheads. It's now on the preset 15 here. And this is a drum hall with a studio delay. And last one, TC Electronic M350. I have it on the auxiliary three and on the auxiliary four, and it goes back to to bears, um, to a stereo actually um, aux return on number three. So the first one here is the delay effect, and it's the slapback that I use mainly for vocals, and the second one is a reverb, the TC Classic Hall, which sounds really really great um, on vocals. Okay. Um, last one here, just power supplies, and here the power supply for the console. Then let's go to the console quickly here. Um, I changed a little bit the routing, so the setup here of my template. Um, first of all, I got here now the kick, snare, and the overheads, as well as toms, height, and so forth, and the rooms and percussion. So this is all drums. Um, that I can use dedicated EQ for that and as well as the um, auxiliary channels. Then we got the percussion, bass and bass DI, acoustic guitar, electric guitars, here in the acoustic guitars, as I said, the TLA now inserted. Um, then we got piano synths, sometimes also strings, the bands. Let's move that away. Um, 
Now comes the lead vocals and the back vocals. And here I have the FX return. It's pretty much the same as in my old video, I believe. Um, I also bring out from the DAW, from Logic Pro X, all the FX auxiliary channels to this FX return. And if I want to, for example, I can print those. And those last two, 23 and 24, is the TLA, um, the preamplifier, and the Friedenstein. So, for example, when I'm recording single songwriters, I can really write the fader on the vocals, for example. Um, and it's a very convenient way to do recording like that. And I really like that. Then, as I said here, we have the subgroups um, with the trumbus, the Elise is 3630. So let's play maybe a little bit of the song here. Sounds like that. Maybe a little bit louder. So this is now the drum parallel compression. All right. Got here the bass. Then we got all the instruments. This is essentially the acoustic guitar, the dobro, electric guitar, fiddle and piano. So all routed to the channels of the console and they are routed then to this instrument bus here with the RNC as compressor. Okay. And here we got the vocal bus. So let's move again to the vocals here. This is the parallel compression of the vocals. Okay. And of course, I can also use um, those subgroups to bring them back, for example, on dedicated tracks in the console, so I can print all those tracks. Um, but I mainly use just the main mix, so I bring back just the stereo track, which is essentially here the mix down track, all right? Um, the song is actually not a song that I produced or recorded. It's a song that I downloaded the raw tracks from the Cambridge forum. I'm gonna show you that. Um, hang on, let's see. Yeah, it's the cambridgemt.com. I have the link in the description below. And it's a song, where is it? Here, Angela Thomas Wade. Milk Cow Blues, so the old blues song. And um, you just click here on the um, direct download link, for example. As you can see, there are many different genres, many different songs that you can use for um, test mixing or doing some mastering or something like that. So just for um, educational purposes, and I just brought up this session here um, to get my routing right. I just finished um, the, the studio makeover and I essentially use always that song um, for the tests, all right? Okay, so this was now the console um, and maybe let's move on here. I just have some couple of microphones in there. Here is the old G4, the Apple G4 I use just for backup. Um, Marshall M MG100 DFX and here Defender. I have also reviews about that on my channel, the Champion 100 and the Orange Crush. Nothing changed here on the battle board. Wawa, compressor pedal from Tigidach, P9 Electro Harmonics and Screaming Blues. Um, kind of like really like the sound, very affordable unit, but it's a really good sound. Um, then here, the very comfy couch. And as you can see, some new equipment. Let's start here. Um, it's kind of like my new onset sound recording equipment um, with the Audio-Technica shotgun mic, the AT875R. Um, very curious, didn't test it so far, just received it yesterday in the mail. Um, then we got shock mount, there's also a boom bowl and some cables. And here we have an empty slot and I'm actually recording to that now with the lavalier microphone. It's the new Zoom H4N Pro, 
gonna probably make also a review uh, a review about that. And here we have a brand new microphone, the AKG C414 XLS. So the flatter one. There's also another version which is has a little bit more hyped high end. And I probably use that mainly for acoustic guitar. And of course, I'm gonna make a proper review about that in the near future. Um, then moving on here, good old arcade tape deck, um, GX X30 dB with Dolby noise reduction. I want to use it a little bit more, but clients don't demand it anymore and especially don't have the time for that. But it's a very good sounding machine, really like that. And here we have the acoustic guitar recording king and my trusty Epiphone Sheridan. Very good sounding. Um, guitar wise, that didn't change anything. Just my Les Paul copy, Fender Stratocaster, and also a very old one, Kingston um, V4, I think. And mainly use it just for slide guitar. It had a broken neck. Doesn't work that good anymore. And here, just my Hono with the Nashville tuning. Couple of mic stands. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, didn't change very much in the room. Looks like that. All right, so that's once again it. I hope that you liked the video. I have the link to the Cambridge forum and in the description below. So you can use the song, download the song, the raw files and mix it yourself and see how that works out. As I said, there are also many different other genres. So have a look there. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you liked that video and see you in the next video.